Okay, so previously we discussed about section 109, exempt transactions. We now go to section 110, which tax credits. This is all about well, the definition of output tax and input tax, or the output VAT and the input VAT. You remember I discussed this earlier that they offset each other. Either way, it, it could be there is an excess of the output VAT or there is an excess of the input VAT. So the output VAT or tax, output tax means this pertains to your sale. Whenever you're, whenever you're a VAT registered person, you are, well, you pass on the 12% to your consumer, right? But the 12% which your consumer paid, you would have to remit that to the BIR. But then again, you also have your purchases for, for you to make your product or for you to render your services. So you also pay theoretically for your VAT, for the, for the goods or the service that you bought. Now, you are allowed to have a tax credit for that because the 12 pesos would, would then have to be, uh, or the 12 percent, if not the 12 pesos, the 12 percent would then have to be offset with your purchases. So the rule here is that if there is an excess of output VAT over the input VAT, then you would have to remit that to the BIR. If the input VAT is more than the output VAT, then you can carry that over to, to the succeeding quarter. When would the input VAT or input tax be more than the output VAT? When you don't have or you don't you you have less sales in a month or in a quarter. So what can abaligya? But then you you continue purchasing your materials. That's the um, scenario where you would have an input tax greater than your output tax but for again if you have an excess output tax then you would have to pay that you would have to remit that or if you have an input tax greater than the output tax then you can carry that over to the succeeding quarter or quarters but provided that for any input tax attributable to zero rated sales then you have the option to be refunded or credited according to section 112 which we will go later and that's it you just read the provisions because these uh, well purchases or importation of goods this read this what is that and this one and okay so we'll go to section 111 what's this transitional or presumptive input tax credits there is a case here I think it was asked before. This was asked before. The Fort Bonifacio versus CIR. What happened here? You, you know the BGC, uh, Bonifacio Global City, right? This is where uh, the, the lands there, because if I remember it right, if I'm not mistaken, this was developed by the, the Metro Pacific Group, by the group of uh, Mr. Pangilinan, and uh, it was during the 1990s. But they were hit by the Asian financial crisis such that there were no investors at the time and they bought the land and it was not yet developed compared to now. So the idea there is they, they, the land became idle for a short time but then it continued to be developed and now as you notice, you know um, how developed the global, the Bonifacio global city is. But the Fort Bonifacio said we will avail of the Section 111 or Transitional or Presumptive Input Tax Credits because we are now a registered person or an entity. And the BIR said uh, you cannot avail of this because for this to be availed of this provision, there must be prior payment of tax. You did not even pay your, there is no even, there, there is no input but for that purchase of land you you made before so why would we even consider your in uh, transitional input tax etc etc the supreme court said uh, the transitional or the input tax credit does not need for you to avail of this you don't need to pay there is no requirement of prior payment of tax it said a transitional input tax credit is not a tax refund but per, per se, but a tax credit. Logically, prior payment of taxes 
is not required before a taxpayer could avail of transitional input tax credit. As we have declared in their decision, credit, uh, tax credit is not synonymous with tax refund. Tax refund is defined as the money that the taxpayer overpaid and is thus returned by the taxing authority. Tax credit, on the other hand, is an amount subtracted directly from one's total tax liability. It is any amount given to a taxpayer as a subsidy, a refund, or an incentive to encourage investment. This court had already declared that prior payment of taxes is not required in order to avail of a tax credit. Okay. Section 112 of the tax code does not prohibit cash refund or tax credit of transitional input tax in the case of zero-rated or effectively zero-rated VAT registered taxpayers who do not have any output VAT. The phrase except transitional, transitional input tax in Section 112 of the tax code was inserted to distinguish creditable in input tax from transitional input tax credit. Transitional input tax credits are input taxes on a taxpayer's beginning inventory of goods, materials, and supplies equivalent to 8% then 2% or the actual VAT paid of such goods, materials, and supplies which are desired. It may, be a, it may only be availed of once by first-time VAT taxpayers. Creditable input taxes, on the other hand, are input taxes of VAT taxpayers in the course of their trade or business which should have been or should be applied within two years after the close of the taxable quarter when the sales were made. So the Supreme Court allowed the tax credit on this because this is the principle. Prior payment of taxes is not required in order to avail of tax credit. And uh, yeah, that, that's, I think this was asked before. It might be asked again. Uh, is there a need to for a taxpayer to pay or to, to have a prior payment of tax before you can avail of a tax credit? No, according to this jurisprudence. So let's take note of the the definitions in section 111 or section 110 and this one section 111 transitional presumptive input tax credits okay next we will discuss section 112 we will have a length, lengthy discussion about this because this for the last two years this had been asked this provision okay